Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. My brothers and sisters and fellow countrymen and women, I've been in transit uh, traveling to uh, a country uh, in which we are serving uh, the interests of our continent in electoral processes. Uh, during the transit time, I saw a little clip that has uh, the message given by our former president, uh, President ECL. My spirit tells me that I should respond uh, to that message. Uh, for what it means uh, to the security and also to the sustenance of democracy and the freedoms which are God-given uh, for our country. First of all, let me start by saying that I am greatly enthused by the statements that have been made by the former president, uh, Edgar Chagwalungu, uh, that are reported through social media in which he complained about the brutality uh, of the police and basically the unfairness of how the police are treating uh, him and his colleagues, particularly in the Patriotic Front. He used certain words to which I wish to respond. Number one, we are grateful that the former president recognizes that every Zambian deserves to enjoy his full freedoms and liberties as placed within our constitution. I agree with him and all Zambians agree with him. Some of us have led our lives for many years, for me 40 years, for my country with the theme of Zambia shall be saved, basically because we would like that every Zambian should come to a place where he or she enjoys her full liberty, freedom, and continues to contribute to the well-being of the country without being interrupted or mistreated by the government in place. We have an ideal on our hearts that we would like to see realized in Zambia. The first ideal is that every Zambian should be free, respected and honored, and given the same levels of justice. Whether the government in place is unique, whether the government in place is MMD, whether the government in place is PF, or whether the government in place is your PND. Zambians should not feel like strangers in their own land just because their particular political party is not in government. So we are agreed on that principle with the former president that all Zambians must be treated equally and the law enforcement agencies must not mistreat anyone uh, depending on their political affiliation, creed, color, or whatever differences that we might have. So that is our goal. But that is really the reason why I have come to you today. I, there are scriptures and uh, golden rules in the world today. Golden rule number one is do unto others as you like them to do unto you. Secondly, there is a scripture that says you reap what you sow. These are godly principles that cannot be changed because I love you as an individual, as a friend. These are principles that are not actuated necessarily by your enemies. They are actuated by the laws of nature. In other countries, in other religions, they call it karma. It's a principle based on you reap what you sow. It can never over bypass you. You will have to go through it. Uh, whatever you saw, you read as well. The third one that I would like to bring to is a legal statement that is made by a lot of, of lawyers. He who comes to equity, he who comes to equity must come with clean hands. Meaning that if you want to accuse someone, 
make sure that you are not guilty of the same thing that you're accusing the other. Going by these three that I've given, first of all, the golden rule, which says do unto others as you would like them to do unto you. Secondly, you reap what you sow. And thirdly, that he who comes to equity must come with clean hands. Based on these three principles of life and biblical positions, President, former President Edgar Chagwarungu does not qualify or does not have local standard or does not have jurisdiction or does not have a moral right to be able to challenge what is happening to him. Having said this, let me make it clear. The movement for multi party democracy that was at the end of the brutalization by the last regime of PF is not trying to imply that if what was happening in the PF is repeated in UPND, then we are okay with it. I'm not okay with it. Nobody should be okay with anything that steps on the rights and freedoms of any other Zambian citizen. But there are certain things in which other people are not really qualified to comment. One of these people is the former president, Edgar Chagwalungu. He, is no, he has no moral right to even point a finger at his police that he trained so well in the rules and areas of brutality. It's a statement we kept making when he was in government. Mr. President, please draw back. Talk to your police. Talk to security wings. Not to be politically responding to what the PF is telling them to do. Because there is a principle of reaping what you saw. And to come back to you. And this is really what is happening at the moment. So the hands of the former president uh, are not clean for him to demand that the police change their ways in the manner in which he trained them to be. It will take many years for this police to change their ways because they have been trained in that way. But we do not condone anything that will perpetuate the activities that PF had brought, unfortunately, to our country. Now, where do I say this? Instead of me sounding like I'm chasing a wild goose, let me be clear. The movement for multi-party democracy was a victim of President Edgar Chagwalungu's brutality. Number one, I can count on one hand how many times in my 10 years as president of MMD we got clearance to hold a political meeting, rally, or meeting anywhere on the soil of Zambia. We spent our time in cells, in police cells, in prisons, in, 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 in situations in which we were not even considered as ambience. I, I really think that the pre former president must take stock before he points a finger at anybody. Let maybe other people talk, but not the former president. I am a victim myself, as he knows very well. Have I forgiven him? Yes, I have. But karma doesn't forgive, doesn't forget. Um, reaping what you saw cannot be changed because I have forgiven the president or we have forgiven the president. Many people's political careers have been paralyzed. Many people's lives have been paralyzed and lost because of President Edgar Lungu's time in government. So I think that what the Zambians want from him is a realization that he has injured this country and many people in this nation. And to take a back seat and allow this reform to take place in a manner that it doesn't happen to anybody else, including himself. He brutalized us. He remembers in Lundaz when we tried to meet our leaders. The police came with their tear gas and tear gas us out of, um, of the hall as MMMD as I met my leaders. From there we tried to go to another place um, in Eastern Province and there we were followed by the police. We could not hold any meeting. We ended up holding meetings in the bush, in the mountain, in a civilized country. And these are the activities of the patriotic front. I give personal examples so that you, you realize that I'm not just trying to hallucinate. These are real experiences that we have and there are many and I can't go through them. And I think that the Zambians expect the former president to do the right thing. Not that he's going to be held this way forever, but if he could come out first and say, fellow Zambians, I am sorry about what I did to you and to the many Zambians. I didn't realize that my regime was so brutal and that we ended, we ended up training police 
to behave the way they're behaving now. Let's leave the past and move forward. And I ask for forgiveness of the Zambian people. But it's immoral for the former president to just go ahead and behave like he never injured people, he never did this. By trying to sound like he's a saint in this matter, we take great exception as a nation. So to us, we would like to tell the president that, the former president, that tear gas was one of the major budget lines in the last uh, regime. And I'm not speaking for anybody, but these are experiences that we went through as the movement for multi-party democracy. And I thought that it, is, it would be moral for me not to respond to this because it really makes my blood to boil. I'm, I, I'm a man of God and I do not want to go that direction, but wherever injustice or um, a, 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 a inability by somebody to judge himself fairly comes into play, it really affects those of us that are involved in the matters of justice. And I think that the former president must really realize that what he did to others is something that has remained as souls that are still as fresh as they were. So please, we ask that that thing be managed. He trained the current police. So, but we are also deeply disappointed by the words that the former president used in that little clip. Those of you that have watched it, remember it says that HH, Hakainde uh, Ichilema's time in government could be shortcut before the 2026 because people can rise and will rise against him. Now that is for a former president stepping on ice. It is stepping on ice for many reasons. First of all, there are words that can come from an ordinary street boy uh, and be forgiven. But there are words that come from a president, a former president, a vice president, a former vice president, a chief justice, a former chief justice. When they are spoken, they carry such gravity and impact that if we don't manage them, they can injure the lives of people. The words that the president used that the Zambian people could rise up against this government, they are in bad faith and they are, it's unfortunate and he is treading on very thin ice. And I would like for our former president to take responsibility for the words that he's starting to use. I know that it is very, very painful to be tear gassed very painful, you know, to not to be allowed to go and see somebody you want to see, but that's how we lived under PF. And that's how we lived. But we never said once that we are going to cut short your presidency your five years um, and incite the citizens to revolt. No, Mr. Former President, the Zambian people we will not revolt. The, former, the, the Zambian people will not go on the streets to fight for you and the PF. They will not do that. The Zambian people are going to adhere to the rule of law. We are now moving out of that old type of politics to start a new type of politics that is going to make Zambians feel comfortable and safe in their own countries. And I think that the Zambians must know what is good for us. And what is good for us is not to just defend and speak for the former president and the PF just because of what they are going through based on some of the actions they themselves are taking. You can talk about tear gassing. If they have ever, if this current government has ever tear gassed anybody, you can count it on, on one hand. But how many times did the PF tear gas us and others? It's countless times. So come with clean hands when you want to point fingers. Now, let me start closing by saying this. Mr. Former President, even with the perceived failures of President Haka in the and the UPND, it's inconceivable for an ordinary Zambian or progressive Zambian to ever think the replacement for President Haka in the and UPND could be PF. It's inconceivable. Yes, there is amnesia, there's a dementia or dementia by many people that can suffer from that, but the wounds are too fresh. Mr. ECL, Mr. President, you were brutal. You were unforgiving. And it is not right for you to continue on this path of creating a Zambia that will never see peace. 
And we ask that if you were able to say sorry, let's start afresh. This whole thing would change. So we think that the statements that were made were irresponsible in terms of the person who said them, that there could be a revolt in this country before 2026. We think that that is totally unnecessary. So we conclude by saying the former president cannot talk about mercy or respect or justice when he never gave mercy, he never gave justice, and he never gave peace. And I'm not in any way trying to endorse any brutality against any Zambian from the UPND government itself. We are not going to say yes to it just because they are government today. But neither are we going to fall prey to the words coming from the mouth of the former president. Finally, we are concerned with the dignity of the office of the former president. When the former president says, if you are if you are former president, former president of Kokui Nivachani, that office is an office of dignity, an office that is supposed to help Zambia move forward, the office that is supposed to bring Zambia together in unity. It's an office that is celebrated and placed within our constitution to be respected and honored. And we find it to be unfortunate that the former president could diss the dignity of that office himself. And we think that this is inconsistent with what is expected from all of us, especially those that have had the opportunity to hold these high positions. So today, I decided that I need to speak to the Zambian people by saying to the former president, we love you and would like for you to live your life in such a way that we can benefit from the wisdom that you have and from the experience that God has allowed you to enjoy and to accumulate. But for the words you said today, we do not condone any one of those words before you ask God to give us a fresh start from the things you did to others. Dr. Mumba, are you, for, are you saying that there should be no forgiveness? Are you authorizing your PND to continue to brutalize others? No. My position remains clear that Zambia must be a free nation for all citizens. But Mr. Edgar Chagwalungu does not qualify to point a finger at anybody in, in terms of brutality and the injury that he did to this country. And I think we need to take responsibility. And I think Zambians should close their ears when they hear Mr. Lungu speaking, because a lot of things that he has been saying of late are very, very sad statements. And they are not going to build Zambia. They are not going to help us move forward. And this will be our submission on this issue. And we hope that our former president could realize the gravity of the position he holds in our country. May God bless our former president, may God bless the Zambian people, wherever you hear me from, we are able to redeem our country and ensure that it becomes a free land for all of us. May God bless you and thank you. Alright, that's all for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you. Peace. I gotta go.